We have a case of role reversal today. It's the man who's trying to get the woman to commit, and he's not too proud to beg. He wants me to help convince her to say yes, but I'm not sure if that's the right answer. Let's get both sides of this love story. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Marquetta Dixon and Marquez Mark Moody. The two of you have been together for seven years, engaged for five, and somehow can't quite seem to get to the altar. So you've come to me for on, on before your vows. You took my compatibility test. And Ms. Dixon, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me why you're here today? I'm here today because um, the man that I love, Mark, I want him to be I want him to communicate with me. I want him to show me that he loves me. Give me some examples of the things that he does or does not do that makes you believe that he doesn't feel that way about you or is unable to communicate in a meaningful manner. Um, after the birth of our last child mm -hmm. back in April of last year, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and anxiety. There was an instance where I needed a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. And the insurance says, okay, you have to pay for this out of pocket. So I asked um, Mark to call the insurance to get it all squared away because this is something I needed to do. And he began to yell at me saying, you know, you're a grown woman. I don't understand why you cannot talk to on the phone with an important matter like this. You need to put on your big girl panties and you need to call them and you need to do this yourself. Do you think he understood the postpartum part or no? I don't think so. Um... Well, let's ask him. <laughs> Mr. Moody. <laughs> Mr. Moody, when she was going through the postpartum thing, did you understand what was happening and did you have an idea what to do about it or not? Not at first. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you said, after that incident, I did do some research. Mm -hmm. After I did that research, I understood. Right. I understood what she was going through. Mm -hmm. Did you make the call to the insurance I actually, company? I, I did, but we still didn't get it squared away. But did it annoy you that she wouldn't do it herself? It did, yeah. And, and tell me why. I just felt like, you know, just like she said, she's a grown woman, you know, mm -hmm. this is your issue. You know, you need to call them and, and figure it out. Did you know she had anxiety about you know, problematic situations and and, 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 and and talking about difficulties? I did, but I ignored it. After I researched it, then I realized, you know, as time was going by, I looked back and I'm like, yeah, she really is going through this. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I need to change my ways and pay more attention to what she's going through. Yeah. So. And can I just put this out here as a, as a, as a, as a, as, as a generalized statement? You know, when there's a weakness on one part, that's your job, is to fill it in. Why be married if your spouse can't step in where you're weak and handle something for you? You should have you should have felt good, put on your Superman cape and fly <laughs> in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. like, yeah. You know, you, I call, you, you call your husband and say, I can't do this, baby. I, I got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what it says. That's, that's your yeah. Superman time, okay? Yeah. You said at one point you she doesn't listen to you, so why should you listen to her, and you gave an example of, about a disagreement with a coworker. Uh -huh. tell, tell me about that. I was talking to a coworker about something, and he, we had a disagreement. So I was like, okay, well, let me give Mark a call. So I called her, and she listened for a little bit, and all of a sudden, she was like, I have to do something. It was about 7.30. She goes to bed at 9 o'clock. She goes to bed, I think it's pretty early to go to bed at 9 o'clock. We get off the phone. I was like, okay, I'll call her back a little later. So I called her back at 9 o'clock. She answered the phone, seemed like she was, annoyed by it. And so I was like, okay, you know, you want me to talk to you, but when I call you, you don't, you sleep. And I, I feel like if you sleep, you know, if I want to talk to you about something, you need to talk to me. She got children, four, yes. two, and one. <laughs> sleep. Yeah. I shoot somebody over my sleep <laughs> when my children were that age. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. she was exhausted. I'm, I'm just going to put that out okay. there. Okay. Having said that, though, it does encourage them to share when you are responsive, when he shares with you. Did you feel that you at least gave him audience for a little while, even though it might have been difficult that just a few moments of what's happening, how you doing, would have been a, a good way to handle that? I believe so. Um, like you said, I, I have small children. Mm -hmm. and. 
my day is long. My day starts most mornings at 4 a.m. Because from 4 to, say, 5.30, that's the only time I have for myself. Him believing that I go to bed too early, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I've been there, done that, you know. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to fall asleep with the bottle in the baby's mouth because it, 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 it's just like that. I want to go on to something else. I think I understand Miss Dixon is doing some things on the phone on some dating sites because she says she's not getting what she wants at home, but I want to know what she's doing, why she's doing it, and whether or not that bothers you. I end up getting a hold of her phone. I looked through her phone, and she was on the app. I start going through the messages, and I noticed that she was talking to a guy, and she had some pictures, the conversation was going, she sent pictures to a guy in her underwear. Mr. Moody, tell me what you caught her doing. She cheated on me in the beginning, in the first couple of months we was together. I didn't find out until a year later. And this made me insecure about my relationship. And before this, I'd never been insecure about me being in a relationship at all. I never thought I would ever get cheated on. <clears throat> and so when I found out, you know, I ended up getting a hold of her phone. I looked through her phone, and she was on the app. I started going through the messages, and I noticed that she was talking to a guy, and she had some pictures, the conversation was going, she sent pictures to a guy in her underwear. And I'm like, well, How I long had you been together when you found that out? That was about a year, year and a half. M Ms. Dixon, what were you doing? And, and it was, why? It was a year and a half after when he found out. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a year and a half after. So when me and Mr. Moody are 10 years apart, mm -hmm. when we got together, I was not 21. I, I was 19, 20. And I can say at that time, I wasn't mature. I wasn't. Um, I had never been into a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had just, I was living on my own. You know, mm -hmm. I was having fun. I was enjoying life. And at that time, which was two to three months when we first started dating, to me, it was not that serious. You didn't feel it had solidified yes. yet. You yes. were just getting it's started new. and you it's were new. <laughs> but what you you were solid though. I was solid, but that wasn't the only time. Explain it to me. Okay, so a backstory of how our relationship goes. For the past four years, we don't have a relationship. We work opposite schedules to avoid having to pay the high cost of childcare. Uh -huh. So I work during the day and he works overnight. Got and you. on the weekends, we were together, but it's mainly like, you know, with the children, doing mm -hmm. things together with the children. So I'd asked him repeatedly for years to switch his schedule mm -hmm. to where we can have a relationship. Because what I've been feeling like for the past couple of years is that we're roommates. Right. And we exchange children. Right. We don't have any relationship. We don't speak to one another. We don't, um, we don't go on dates. We're not romantic with each other. It's literally like he is a roommate. He's someone that I don't have a relationship with. And I feel like there's things that I want out of a relationship. There's things that I need. And he, I feel like he's not willing to meet me on those things, like communicating. I got you, which leads me to an issue that I found in your paperwork, which was, what about the nature of the intimacy you do have and, and, and how you guys aren't necessarily on the page, on the same page with that sex issue? You used the term turbo style. <laughs> now, I want to know what turbo style is and why you don't like it. <laughs> how do you keep busy schedules from ruining the intimacy in your relationship? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. I ain't gonna lie. You stopped me in my tracks. Because <laughs> when you talked about how you're not on the same page with sex, you used the term turbo style. <laughs> now, I want to know what turbo style is and why you don't like it. <laughs> um, before he dated me, he dated older women. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my 20s, and mm -hmm. I feel like maybe... 
he's accustomed to, you know, looser, <laughs> you know. I just believe she called us old women. <laughs> is, and is that what y'all got? That's what I got. You ain't want to clean that up a little bit, Miss Dixon. I feel like the reason I say that is because he's very rough. He's he, rough. He doesn't take the time to finesse, mm -hmm. to get me in the mood, to get mm -hmm. things heated up. It's just straight oh, to just it. Straight to it. And it's painful. And then once we do get going, I express to him that we were doing the same thing over and over and that he says, you know, switch it up a little. So what he would start to do is he'll do a move like one, two, three, boom, switch. One, two, three, boom, switch. That's, so that's I switching call it, it up, right? I, <laughs> So I, I don't the, think so. that's yeah. what she's meant. But I appreciate the fact that you were attempting to, 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 to alter your game. But maybe that's, we, you, you know, right. alter that's your game to make her happy. Uh, you, 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 you blew past a word that I thought was important when you're talking about sex. You said painful. It's painful. Because it's too soon. Yes. Do you know what what, I'm, what we talking about here? Now I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because we talked about it, so, you know, yeah. I do. No, if it's you're not, not completely enough. ready, everything don't glide. Yeah. And when it don't glide, it don't feel good. And just for your information, <laughs> we older women need that as well. <laughs> We're not just, we not turbo style. You know, just, just, we, we need love and run up to so don't get that twisted. <laughs> Ms. Dixon, I believe that you're very mature and very intelligent. I want you to tell me why that guy is the one you want to spend the rest of your life with. Go. I want to spend the rest of my life with you because I love you. I, I love the connection that we had when we first got together. It was fun. It was uplifting. It was new. It was exciting. And... I know that you have the potential to do great, and I want to go on that ride with you. Ms. Dixon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuss at you a little bit. Right before the wedding date, you called it off. Why? I, I was doing everything in regards to the wedding. Uh, the date, the location, booking the flight, mm -hmm. the hotel. I was doing everything, colors, and... Um, I had asked for his help on something, and it just made me realize, you know, maybe he doesn't want to get married because he's been allowing me to... Oh, Miss Dixon, stop right there. Let me clear that up <laughs> for you, then I'm going to go to this man over here. He didn't want to do it because he ain't interested. He ain't interested in the colors and the location and the venue and the way. You know why he ain't interested? Because he's a dude. They don't sit around <laughs> and dream about, oh, should I have blush or should I have pink or should I have mauve? Don't care. We they just, just want up. you to come home with them. That's yeah. it. And with what he just said. We just show up. He yeah. said he was going to let me do everything. And he was because it's show your up. dream. They don't dream about the wedding and the gown and the, and, and, and the grooming. They, they don't care. They it, just want you to come home with them. I say that when he said that, it showed me how our entire relationship has been. He lets me do everything, and he just shows up at the end. Um, I am the sole parent when it comes to our children. Parenting, cleaning, household duties. I, I got you. You need more help. I need help. You need more help. Mr. Moody? Yes. Give me a 30-second sales job. Well, first of all, you're beautiful. Since the first day I met you, you know, and I love you. I love you back then. I still love you now. You're smart, intelligent, and gave me three beautiful children. And I don't want to spend the rest of my life with you. I don't want nobody else but you. No one. Oh, see there? He got it right. <laughs> A plus. What would you do if your partner wasn't participating in your day-to-day -day activities? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back.
Mr. Moody, I think you are head over heels in love with this woman. I think you are a good dude. I think you are kind, loving, mature, and all of that. What I'm gonna ask you to do is don't do male mistake number 101A, which is allow a woman to suck up all of the duties at home. Right. If she's helping with the money, you need to help with the kids in the home. Right. Understand what I'm telling you? It don't make you less of a man. It gets you more sex because she's not as tired. <laughs> That's all I'm just saying about that. All righty? Are, are you on that? Cause yes. Did, did you hear what she said? I feel like I do everything and he just shows up? Yes. And it does, women don't want much in that area. You take a couple of things off our plate, we straight. Mm -hmm. We're absolutely straight. Okay. You got it? Yes. You've got yourself one heck of a dude right here. And what men often need is direct instruction about what it is you need from them. Babe, I need you to take A, B, and C off my plate. Bam! That's how that works. Having said that, I'm going to say this. You got something you want to do? Yes. Hop to it. <laughs> I didn't do it right the first time. I want to tell you I love you. The first time I proposed to you, we was laying in bed, and the ring was in the closet. I got back in the bed and just handed you the ring and said, would you marry me? But now I want to do it the first time, the right way the second time. I love you. Like I said, you're beautiful. And by, by I'm 10 years apart from you, and I learned a lot from you, especially by you being young. Just want to know, will you marry me? I, I need for you to... Um, I don't want to get married to someone that I don't feel like they could... We have a relationship. There's things that I want from you that you're just not getting. I do want to marry you, but there's going to be steps that need to be taken. I need to, I need to feel loved. I need to feel wanted. I need, I need the basic things in a relationship, and I don't get that from you. And I'm here to tell you today, I promise to do that. I promise you to do that. This is the reason why we're here, because I want to fix this. I want it to work. We have three kids. And the cycle needs to end with parents being separated from their kids living in different households. Yeah, holler that one to the rooftops. Especially. <laughs> Ms. Dixon, I want to say this to you. It ain't perfect, but it's workable. And if you want to go into marriage counseling right now, because that's what me and Big E did, so you can fix those things that you're not feeling that you're getting from him. First of all, I honor the fact that you said that. I honor the fact that, you, that you're not willing to take anything. I'm going to get you up off your knees. You're going to be all right there, brother. You know what I mean? I do think he loves you, but I think everything you need and want can be worked out in marriage counseling, and I would encourage you to get that first, okay? Good luck to both of you. Um, counseling... And head toward the altar. You got three kids. You got to fight for it. This matter is adjourned. So what's it going to take for him to get a yes? He wants a yes. I need for him to show me that he loves me. Mm -hmm. The things that he was saying here today, he doesn't say at home. Right. I don't get any emotion from him. And I want an emotional connection.